And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to get a grade nine in chemistry. The first thing you need to do in chemistry is memorize all the formulas. Thankfully, there's not that many formulas, but there are still enough for you to memorize. So go to your spec, find every single formula that you need to know and memorize. Learn the units with the formulas, by the way. Some of the problem areas in chemistry, mole questions, chemical equations, chemical tests, and organic chemistry. Use the specification of learning content and organizing your notes. You can use the specification for is as a checklist. At each part of the spec, you can turn that into a question and say, can I answer this question as an answer in an exam? Some people use Notion, for example, and they use that toggle tab on there to learn this. You can use flashcards or you can use many of the different methods uh, that I've talked about in the past. It's up to you what you use. But the important thing is that you are using it as a checklist before you walk into the exam. One of the ways you can be super efficient is start making a crib sheet crip sheet, cheat sheet, whatever you want to call it. On there, you're going to write down all your problem areas. And what you're going to do is you're going to write down the key format style of the questions that they typically ask you. You're not going to write every minute detail down on there, but you're going to put your key questions that you struggle with. Ultimately, if you're comfortable with the topic, you don't need to keep working on it. I've talked about retrospective timetables before, and it's something that you need to utilize and focus only on the areas that you need to work on. Purchase the grade seven to nine workbooks uh, for Collins, uh, grade eight to nine CGP workbooks. And I've mentioned this in my other videos, my plus one rule uh, in terms of marks that are allocated is always one more point than the number of marks that they've asked you for. If they ask you a six marker question, you're gonna write seven points. If they ask you for a three marker question, you're gonna write four points. Always write plus one number of points. Practicals are about 20% of your exam paper. It is well worth memorizing them and you need to memorize them in a certain format. And the format goes like this. Number one, objective. Number two, you need to know all the apparatus or equipment. Number three, you need to know the errors. And the way I like to do it is I like to write the errors and the mitigations next to them. So you've got the errors and the mitigations in a table form. Error, error number one associated with this mitigation that goes with it. Error number two and you know mitigation number two. Similarly, you want to do hazards or risks and safety in another column. Students learn them separately and I don't think that's useful because you can't then connect the recommended safety measure for uh, a particular hazard. If there's variations in an experiment, learn the different variations. And, uh, and sometimes you may need to know some theory, some analysis, or a particular graph needs to be drawn afterwards. What's important is you don't need to know the actual results. You just need to know the rough theory about it. That is the format that you need to know for each practical. I find it quite boring. It's the most boring part of science for me, the actual practicals in terms of for exam preparation but it's very important. You can literally memorize 20% of the paper beforehand. And you do that by learning the practical. That's it. They can't ask you any other questions on practicals other than what I've mentioned. One final point about practicals though, is I would recommend you watch the actual video of the practicals. I know a lot of you guys have been through the COVID uh, pandemic period and you may not have done the practical. It's really important that you visualize it by seeing the actual practical. I'm not telling you to go on YouTube and look at the format of the practical for the exam. No, I've told you that and you can work that out. Uh, I'm talking about the actual video that you can watch. You have a picture playing in your head when you're thinking about the practical. Another section which all exam boards have is a section called working scientifically. It's very important that you do learn these parts. So there's stuff like uncertainty, there's stuff like repeatability and so on and so forth. So you read through this and you just learn the key points. So it's just another chapter that you need to know. And this applies to all three sciences. Now the big problem, which is problem solving in science-based subjects. We've got a scary looking question. Okay. Because why is it scary? Because they've thrown in this word this year. I don't even know how to pronounce this year. This is acetylacylic acid. What on earth is that? Like, you know, most students would be looking at that and having a heart attack. They're like, whoa, what, what on earth is this? Like I've never learned this word before. That's fine. Yeah. One of the ways they can make a question scary is by, you know, using unfamiliar terms. But the logic will always be the same. Here are my steps that I would recommend that you utilize. And they might sound a bit babyish, but I've made them like that on purpose. Number one, read one phrase at a time. The relative formula mass of acetylsal acid. Acetylsalicylic acid. Acetylsalicylic acid. Acetylsalicylic acid. Number two, understand the phrase. When you've read it, make sure you've actually understood what it means. Do not move on until you've understood that phrase. It's to understand one phrase, yeah? To understand, understand it. 
So that's the MR of acetylsalicylic acid is 180. Hmm. Not that bad, actually. It's just telling us the MR of acetylsalicylic acid is 180. Have I understood it? Have we understood it? Because we're only looking at literally one sentence, one phrase. I think we have. Number three, write down the key information from that phrase. The way you write down the key information is in an equation form. If they say, for example, this beaker has 10 milliliters of HCl in it. So you're going to put down beaker volume equals 10 milliliters. You need to put that information down for yourself. And I'm going to say is equal to 180. So when I say write down the key info, okay, I mean pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time you're writing an equation. You need to be comfortable with equations. So you need to be comfortable with the maths uh, part of algebra. Yeah. So that's, that's something to be understood. Number four is repeat steps one to three for the rest of the passage. It is asking us to work, work out the number of moles. I'm trying to understand that. Yeah. Okay, so what have you understood from it? What do you need to write down? What's the key info from that? Okay. So we're going to say mass, but I like to use, I like to use the subscript. Yeah. The subscript of what the mass is for. Yeah. This is the mass of the acid, which is 300 milligrams. They want you to work out the number of moles. So that's also a key piece of information. Number of moles of what? The acetosilic acid. So I'm going to, um, and it's question mark in this case. Yeah. There's no information. This is what we are working out. Number five is if there are multiple sources, for example, they've got a text, then they might have a diagram and they might have a table. You need to make sure the information is the same because sometimes what they do, and they're very snidey like this, what they'll do is they'll mention all of the points minus one in the table, for example or they'll mention one additional point, whichever way around. It looks like to the naked eye that all the information in the different sources are basically the same. When you see multiple sources in a question, right? So if it says figure one and there's a text or a little blurb, be on the alert, think, aha, these guys, these suckers are trying to, you know, con me here. The next step is to cycle through all the formulas. And if you remember, I mentioned that you needed to memorize the formulas. The way I think about it is these formulas are on like a revolver. And I'm revolving through them. I'm like, which formula do I need for this particular question? Is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? Oh, no, it's this one. This has all of the key points that they mentioned here. And so you go from there. Sometimes you might need multiple formulas, but you write down all the formulas that the information you've just jotted down could be related to. Now that you've written down all the information, what you need to do is say, okay, what science do I know? What formula or what rule do I know that applies to this? Mold equals mass over MR. Number seven, answer the question. Solve the question. A big part of science exams, right, is these long worded questions. And the way you break them down is like this. Yeah, all we're going to do now is we're going to substitute the numbers in. Until step seven, here's the funny thing. We hadn't done any science at all. Maybe in step six, you could say we did science by applying, uh, writing down the formula, but actually applying the numbers into the formula is done in step seven. Six steps were all done to understand the question. I guarantee you, if you take it as simply as this all the time, even for the easier questions, when you're starting out, you will absolutely not have any problems with problem solving questions in science. I really appreciate the support you guys are showing. Please do subscribe and drop down comments on what kind of videos you guys want to see. We don't rise to our level of expectation but rather we fall to our level of training. And make sure to watch our video on memorization.